Okay, hey there. Um, this is supposed to be a short tutorial video for the newest version. Uh, we have a few videos up there for the older versions, which are going over all the core features, and uh, they have stayed pretty much the same. However, uh, the UI has changed drastically. Oh, sorry for that. Just going to turn on the music on my end for a bit. Um, so I thought it'd be nice to uh, get a new video out there, and it has been requested by a person in the Steam forums, so uh, two flies with one stone. Uh, you start out with Icarus in this little screen. Now uh, this is for version 2.0, by the way, and there will be minor changes in 2.1. Uh, you have three buttons, create a project, open a project, and import old projects from version 2.0, which you only have to worry about if you used Icarus before version 2.0. Uh, so let's create a new project and let's just call this one uh, demonstration. So we save that and Icarus opens up with a new project called demonstration. Um, this is the start screen, it shows a bit of uh, short information. This is a very important notice, uh, which <laughs> I urge you to read if you don't watch this video. Um, you have a little overview here showing you how many blueprints you have, how many attributes and instances you have. Uh, if there's a, a tutorial post that is linked here, a short concept article, which I highly recommend you read. It's quite short. You should be able to uh, go over it in a few minutes. Uh, and it explains most of the core concepts in Icarus. However, I'm going to uh, explain most of it here as well. So the short idea here is to have a little example. So uh, I will create a very, very small world uh, with a few characters. Uh, and like a couple of locations and maybe items. Uh, so in order to do that with Icarus, we need to first specify that our world has characters. So we right click, uh, we click on create blueprint, um, and then we rename that blueprint and we call it character. You can now open the blueprint by double clicking it and you see that we have two new tabs. One is called attributes, instances, and information is just a text box. So uh, we need to think about what does our character need to contain in terms of information. Well, um, apart from a name, which is implicit for everything, our character probably has an age. So we need to think uh, what kind of value is an age. Is it a bit of text? Is it a color? Uh, well, age is probably a number. Uh, is it a list? Uh, no, it isn't. So let's just create that. Uh, we can now rename the attribute. We can say, uh, okay, this is clearly an H. Then uh, let's create a new, a few other ones. Maybe our character is dead already, so uh, we'll have a boolean attribute, which is um, just a yes or no question, and that will delineate whether or not our character is already dead. Uh, let's have a folder, and this folder will be for anything that is appearance related. So we have uh, the eye color. We have the uh, skin color, and we have a number, which is the height of the character. So those are a few attributes which we have set up now. And uh, let's create one more just to demonstrate uh, how lists work. So let's say we want to have uh, hobbies for our character, but you know, hobbies can be anything. We can write anything, so it's probably text, uh, but he can have multiple ones, so it's also a list. Uh, we call this attribute hobbies. Uh, if we now want to create a character, we move over to the instance tab. We right click and select create instance. We now need to specify what blueprint we want to create an instance from and we want to create a new character. So we've created it and we can open it. And you will see all the attributes we've set up are on the side here. Uh, let's give this character a name first. So. Uh, He's gonna be called Keter Baldrun. Uh, he is 42 years old. Uh, he is not dead. His eye color is uh, light red and very special. Uh, his skin color is dark brown. Uh, he is 178 centimeters tall. And now when we click on hobbies, you will see that we can uh, add as many items as we want. So uh, he likes linguistics. Uh, he also is a fan of uh, um, um, reading. And he is a world builder. Oh, wh what coincidence. And now if we hover over this, you will see that it will say linguistics, reading, and world builder. This is the, the very basic 
uh, foundation of egress. You create the values that you want to put in and you put them in. Uh, we can also specify a bit of information about him here. Uh, Peter is a very studious person. Uh, in the 2.1 release, which most of you will probably get to see, this will have a proper text editor. So um, let's say that uh, we want to create another blueprint and this blueprint is just a location. A location has just one very simple attribute for now, and that is the uh, population of the location. Okay, so let's create a new folder. Uh, let's call it cities. And we say that uh, we want to create a new location. And uh, this is uh, Turlin City. Okay, it has a population of uh, 7 million roughly people uh, and that's it that's just gonna be it for today uh, for this but uh, maybe now uh, a character is born in a city and we want to specify that we want to say okay every character is born in a city which uh, is a location so we create a new attribute and we say it is a reference of things we uh, say it's not a list, every character only has one birthplace, at least in my world it does, and we say this is the birth birthplace of the character. Now Icarus doesn't know what we actually want to reference, it just knows that we want to reference something. So we right click it, we say open a new window, and then here it says blueprint reference. We can click select blueprint, click on location, save this, it will say location here, so we're free to close it. And now if we go to Peter Bald uh, Baldron, uh, we will see birthplace does not have anything selected, so we can now click on Telrin City, and Telrin City is linked to Peter Baldron. Um, so th that is how references work, that is one of the two currently uh, implemented complex attribute types, everything else is literally just putting in some value. Uh, you can have lists of references, by the way. Uh, the other one is uh, a choice attribute. Choice attributes are interesting. Uh, you can solve them by, like normally, uh, when you have a, a choice of something, you can just write the text all the time, but maybe you make spelling mistakes, or maybe you want to change the choices or restrict them to make sure that you don't accidentally use something wrong. Uh, for example, for the alignment of a character, uh, which you have in a lot of RPG systems, so we say this is our alignment. It's not a list, you can only have one alignment in this system. Uh, and again, to specify the settings, uh, we open a new window, we right click to add a new option, and we say this is good, uh, this is neutral, and last but not least, we have evil. Those are, oops, I misspelled that one. Those are our three options. We can close this down go to character, it will now say alignment, and we can now specify any one of these values. So um, Peter Baldron is a very good guy. What a what a very friendly person. Uh, and that is it. That is the, the basics of, uh, of how this works. With, um, yeah, I, I, I believe, I hope this is enough to, to understand how this works. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask in the Steam forums or to join us on our Discord. We are very active uh, throughout the day unless uh, we have something important outside of Icarus going on. We will usually respond within a few hours, uh, if not minutes. So um, yeah, thank you very much and I hope this has been informative.